Hi, I'm Jason Vio, and uh, you just heard me play Etude 8 by Volobos, and um, that, uh, this, this is for the New York Guitar Festival. Thank you, David Spellman, for inviting me. It's an honor and uh, to be with so many fine players and such. And uh, I'm not real keen, actually, on speaking about uh, Julian Breen because I didn't know him uh, at all. I met him after a concert he gave in Buffalo, my hometown, when I was probably 13 or 14, and he signed like a press photo or something like that, which, I mean, that was great for me, you know. Um, he, I'll just say that he, uh, Julian Bream, by a considerable distance, and this is within the context of, again, this is way, way before the internet, this is the 80s, and. I got my records mostly via public library uh, from my teacher, Jeremy Sparks. Uh, but he was, but I listened to quite a, a good number of different guitars. He, he was by a considerable distance the most interesting and fun and naturally musical player to me uh, to listen to on records. Um, and it was, it's kind of like, you know, in a way, it was. It's kind of like it was like looking at a photograph in color as opposed to looking at it uh, in black and white. Now, I know some of you are probably already thinking like, "Yeah, but black and white photos are so much cooler and stuff." And and yes, in the right hands, they can be, of course, wonderful. But meaning, what I mean by that is in color, meaning like there's just something more um, 
closer to reality <laughs> uh, in, in a lot of ways about uh, about that for him. So already I'm rambling. Um, so the Villa Lobos uh, LP my dad actually bought and brought it home. I had the classical guitar, or classic guitar with the Diabelli Soar and uh, Giuliani uh, from the library. I, co put, I copied that down on a cassette tape. Um, and so I could listen to it again and again. And, uh, oh, we had the, my dad bought the cassette of Granados and Albanese. That was another one that my dad and I played all the time. Like I probably listened to it 200 times. Um, so in kind of like the revisionist lists, the Villa Lobos recording of 78 is not always included in those things, but like for me, like two of the most striking things I ever heard on a guitar as a young person, as a kid really, were on that record. The way, the ending, the way he plays the very ending of Villa Lobos 8 to 10 and Villa Lobos 8 in general. Like basically like the performance of that. And being that I liked if my I was studying something with my teacher Jeremy, I would, you know, if he brought something that was in a, again in those days in a book, and I would read the whole book and I would of course practice what I was supposed to practice, but I would kinda on the sly, I would read everything else in there. So that was kind of my my relationship with Villa Bush eight was uh, was that I was kinda, you know practicing that as, as well, even though that was not in my repertoire. And it never was in my repertoire, actually. I've never, like a lot of pieces, I've never performed it. It's just kind of always there. It's just an old, it's kind of like an old friend now, Villa Lobos 8. And it always connects me with my, again, my relationship as a listener to Julian Bream, who really was just, what really was great. And uh, so I thought when David Spellman asked me to be a part of this, I thought that was like the perfect uh, thing from my perspective, just coming where I come from. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.